My white hair was uh, probably achieved as a result of 40 years of fighting Zionism. And uh, we got actually nowhere in all those 40 years um, until about a few months ago when for the first time I and many others have started seeing a change. And that change is really mammoth. We only uh, start to understand it and we have not even fully um, you know, um, analyzed how deep that change is. Um, what I mean is not just the general public is moving away from the uncritical support of Israeli brutalities, but many Jewish people who were on the left on the whole, but didn't take a position, of course they didn't support Israel, but they didn't also oppose it when it was um, doing the things that it is always doing. And now, I think, in the last um, four months, after the brutalities of Gaza, and the brutalities of Gaza are not new, of course. Um, you remember the brutalities uh, in Beirut and in the south of Lebanon in 2006, <coughs> and all the brutalities before. But somehow, the brutality of the Israelis in Gaza has touched a raw nerve all over the world. And we're now seeing the beginning of change. And what I want to say is that the South African moment of the conflict has arrived. It's with us. What I mean by that is that South Africa could not change. Apartheid could not be defeated until the boycott, divestment, and sanction um, uh, movement, <coughs> an anti-apartheid movement, became almost a global phenomenon. It was much stronger than the um, uh, movement against the war in Vietnam. It was really, a f you know, one of the first global um, political uh, phenomena. And I took part in it as a young man when I came to London, and it taught me what I know about Palestine. It taught me that uh, Israel is an apartheid state. I could immediately see this about South Africa, but I didn't as an Israeli understand it about Israel until I took part in anti-apartheid. So uh, a belated thank you to anti-apartheid movement, but also I think um, an understanding that we're now at that moment where the whole world is about to say to Israel, enough is enough. And I want to thank um, Johnny and uh, the, the organizers and of course the venue for putting this on because um, you should not underestimate um, the importance of this. The BFI for 10 years has refused to give home to the Palestinian Film Festival in London. Uh, if, there is cons uh, if there is some kind of position they stick to for 10 years that's the only one I know, the BFI is stuck to for 10 years. They are against the Palestinian Film Festival. That in Sheffield, uh, you have this in such a auspicious uh, location with support and with uh, a good public on the first night. I think it's a great thing. And uh, I want to thank you for organizing this. And I want to talk about... Um, cultural resistance. Cultural resistance because, let's face it, who can defeat the Israeli army? Not the Palestinians. They don't think this. I don't think this. You don't think this. <coughs> and uh, Nelson Mandela and his movement could not defeat the uh, South African army. But they defeated apartheid. We defeated the apartheid. We, I mean the world. And we defeated it without um, army, uh, without military means, uh, without mighty powers, with our words, with our images, with our sentiments. We are coming together for many years. And therefore, I am not saying ever that the Palestinians have no right uh, to an armed struggle. Of course they have a right, and I think they pursue it. But they know, and we know, that that's not the only front. There are 
different fronts, but it is the same struggle. And those struggles, the cultural, the political, the military, the financial, etc., the m diplomatic, uh, are basically working together, and that's how we should consider them. And um, in the last few months, since um, Jesus Christ was elected to become the American president, um, some people have taken to believing that our life, you know, the sun will be a bit warmer in the north and, and global warming will disappear and God knows what else will become better because we have Obama in the White House. Well, guys, what are we talking about? Um, I don't think we should wait for Obama, for Blair, for Bush, for Brown, <coughs> or anybody else. Berlusconi, there's another B, yeah. Um, no, we should not wait for them more than we waited for them in the days of apartheid. We didn't wait for an American president to end apartheid, and they did not do it. And they would never have done it if it wasn't for a, <coughs> a decisive, consist, con, uh, you know, consistent, um, very demanding anti-apartheid movement, which I'm very glad to say was very strong in this country. And in it, there was support from the unions, there was support from the academy, there was support <coughs> from artists, from sports <coughs> and women. Uh, it was support from all uh, corners of civil uh, society that brought about, in the end, the fall of apartheid. I'm not here to argue that South Africa now is the new paradise. That's not the point. The point is we have, you, you know, across the world, defeated apartheid. And uh, I agree with Naomi Klein that what has happened in 93 in South Africa is despicable. The West has basically broken Mandela and so on. But I think this audience does not need persuasion on this point. You, you sitting here is evidence that you understand those things. But I still think that defeating apartheid is iconic, is symbolic, and has a value beyond South Africa. And what are we fighting when I'm saying that we're fighting a cultural struggle against Israel? I'm Israeli, and I'm even, I wouldn't say that I'm a Jew, but I'm Jewish, you know, <laughs> um, in, in a sense that I'm an atheist. But of course, you know, a lot of us come from a background which might be Jewish or Christian, Muslim, without actually being those things. Um, and I know, and you do, that um, Israel has got one of the most powerful machineries of cultural production and persuasion on this planet. It has, at its behest, um, millions of very willing, um, uncritical, unquestioning Jewish followers. Uh, I'm saying this in very stark terms because I think one of the most interesting phenomena of the last few months, and definitely beyond the last, you know, the last few years, is that at the forefront of the struggle against Zionism and its um, military and other um, adventures and, and war crimes, uh, stand um, a very large group of uh, Jewish activists, and I'm very proud that that has happened, because as you will know, this was also the case in South Africa, where Jews have divided into those who supported Nelson Mandela and his movement, and those who opposed, and there was no one left in the middle. And this is a problem, but this is what has happened. And I think we're now saying to the Jewish community in this country, or also in the United States, guys, decision time. Are you on the side of occupation, oppression, repression, murder, war, uh, with no future for anyone in the Middle East? Are you on that side? Or are you on the side of a solution, a just solution 